Welcome back and at the end of our last video um, I was printing 3D printing our letter A and it's finished now eight hours later there it is in all its glory looking very very nice I have to say um, and you can see how that looks in comparison to our 3D model on Fusion 360 now you'll notice here in the back at the moment we've got the support material that uh, held this or the raft not support material in this case this is the raft that holds the 3d print onto the build platform um, and we, our build platforms have got little holes in um, like perforations and you can see here well it, I can feel it with my fingers this is, this is a rough texture so this was basically uh, bonded to the build platform through these perforations um, this raft will peel away and I will be putting that away shortly but I'm not going to pull it away just yet because you can see here there's the um, let's spin this round again there's the cutout for my um, micro USB socket and it just fits in there beautifully I don't know whether you can see that with my finger kind of blocking the view a little bit but um, I rather like the fact that the raft on the back there kind of gives a nice flush edge there and I'm thinking about actually gluing that in before I take the the raft off anyway before I do that I also just want to have a look at one or two features of Fusion 360 while I'm here and you can see here that at the moment in Fusion 360 this is showing us this uh, perspective representation so it's showing how the the depth of the design is going to a vanishing point in the distance um, which is the way that our our brains you know interpret what what our eyes see but if I look at this from the front view if I click on the front view here you'll notice that suddenly it goes to a flat what's called an orthographic image and this is the way that I've configured Fusion 360 and I don't know whether yours is configured quite the same way so um, I, I thought I'd mention this now I should have mentioned it a long time ago at the beginning but uh, I'll just show you in here go to the uh, the, the graphic settings down here in Fusion 360 go to camera and notice at the moment I've got perspective and orthographic faces enabled if I go on to perspective then I will always get this 3d perspective view it's representing the depth of material there going to a vanishing point but I find that when I'm working on uh, faces or work planes I really want to be able to see a flat face it gives you a lot more control however if I were to go on to orthographic all the time then when I move this into 3d hopefully you can see there that the shape doesn't feel right the way that it's it's extending here into this Z axis here um, if I just to highlight the point if I now go to perspective you'll see how the shape changes and now this looks more realistic because again I've got this idea of a vanishing point in the distance which of course is the way as I said that we see it in real life so what I do is I choose camera I choose perspective with orthographic faces and then that way you get the 3d representation when I'm spinning it around but when I go to an actual work plane it goes into orthographic to allow me to draw more accurately I'll also just mention as well um, the way that I'm manipulating the image here uh, I tend to find people have to go into the orbit here to spin shapes around which is absolutely fine but I find that a little bit cumbersome I'm going to press the escape key there to deselect that I'm going to go up to my login name here um, I'm going to go to preferences and what I do because I've worked with Tinkercad in the past oh, okay um, I make it so that my pan zoom and orbit shortcuts are all based around the Tinkercad experience um, which means that now I can pan with my mouse and I can right click and orbit around so as I said perhaps I should have said that at the start but that's the way I have Fusion 360 configured. You might have also noticed as well that Fusion 360 suddenly has the updated interface here. So when I was running it uh, before the previous videos, it hadn't finished the update and now it has. So effectively, things are pretty much the same. It's just that we have little eyes now that show where these, uh, you know, that allow us to make things visible or invisible. And the graphics look different and there's a slight rearrangement of the menus here but nothing that should cause a problem for these tutorials I hope um, so um, I've also gone ahead uh, and I've also um, laser cut the acrylic there it is that's going to go on top um, it does actually fit perfectly on top there 
um, I've not removed I've, I've taken off the the lower surface there I've not removed this upper surface um, I've actually gone for a frosted pink so I'm going to see how this turns out when the LEDs are installed but that I think is going to look rather nice um, I'm finding it a little bit insipid with the pink and the grey of the of the filament here so maybe that's not quite so good we'll see what happens when it's all illuminated um, but one of the things I want to look at is um, is changing the color here you know changing the filament color for, for something a little bit more attractive perhaps than just this gray um, or of course you can spray it so uh, what I want to do quickly in this video is just look at how I made this and there's something else I'm going to show you as well while I'm at it but let's look at this acrylic cover first so I'm going to bring in here 2d design uh, let's just make sure everything's clear here let's just turn off my bodies and turn on the sketches and let's also just right click and edit that sketch so I can see all of my dimensional constraints there they all are and as we've seen before they match the dimensional constraints in my original design here on Techsoft 2D design when I created this CAD file I also uh, duplicated it with gridlock turned on so that what I have here is the exact same letter profile but without all the dimensions so this is what I'm going to use to create and in fact what I'm going to do here, I think I'm going to bring the camera back in how am I going to do this I'm going to bring that there we are that's what I'm going to do and do that marvelous okay so so we're going to we're going to uh, laser cut this and all I'm doing here let's just zoom out a little bit here I, I like to keep everything nice and clean and neat so I'm going to use the selection tool here I'm going to make sure I select everything get the bounding box selecting everything there we go uh, gridlock's turned on I'm simply going to pull that up and I'm going to pop it up there so it's just off the drawing area and then I can pick up this the A that I want to laser cut I'm going to move, move this into the top left corner here for laser cutting I'm just going to uh, zoom back in again now and uh, I want to have this for our laser cutter we need to make this blue so I'm going to come to the contour options here okay I think I did this with my S you know I could just select the whole thing and I could just change this to be blue you know yeah I could do that and that would cut but I'm not going to do that um, partly because this shape is actually made up from a series of separate lines and again yes what I could do here is I could select it all I could go to edit I could make that into a path so that now it's going to be treated as one continuous profile yep sure I could do that but I'm not going to do that either I'm going to go with the contouring tool and um, I primarily do this because I can control which bits cut first and which bits cut last so I'm going to put my contour spacing to zero and I'm going to make a mistake here as well no not at this point it's the next bit it's, I've got to change something I'll leave that as it is so zero millimeter contour spacing change my color here to blue and here's the thing I can now click just uh, to the side of this triangular cut out and that means that this will cut on the laser cutter first and then I can click on the outline profile and that will cut second why is that important well if I cut the external profile first on the laser cutter once it's cut that shape out what can happen is as it drops out of the sheet of acrylic it can misalign slightly and then when I cut out this inner triangle it's not perfectly aligned but if I cut this triangle out first the over the, the, the acrylic is still held in the sheet and I do the external cutout at the end it's more reliable so that's now ready I can send that to the laser cutter and it will produce this acrylic uh, window uh, which I'm going to place which I'm going to glue when everything's finished over the top now the other thing I wanted to show you here was the fact that I've also laser cut from some thin card um, a, a, a the profile of the a but this is actually going to fit inside the the letter and it's a perfect fit um, and because of the way this is 3d printed because the 3d printer gives me this grain as it builds up the layers this grain kind of acts as as a, I don't know, a ratchet I'm trying to think of something but like a textured surface that the card kind of pushes down into and locks the card in place now actually I have made a mistake with this because what I neglected to do was put the cutout in here for the little uh, micro USB socket so I'm going to have to do that 
right now but first of all let's let's just get this this profile right here so this the profile for this card is this inner edge so let's bring back up uh, Fusion 360 here and I can see here that I'm looking at this inner edge, edge here that the card is basically the same as the highlighted blue area I've selected here so this wall thickness when we did this offset now it's somewhere in these dimension lines here it is it's hidden right down there I've got an offset there of 2.5 millimeters can I zoom in on that yeah there it is look there's my offset 2.5 millimeters it would be better actually if I were to bring it out here like that better for standardization I'm not quite sure where the arrow has gone there should be an arrow right there that's a bit odd um, okay so I want to have a contour of 2.5 millimeters so what I'm going to do is come to my contour tool again I'm going to put in here a contour spacing of 2.5 and I'm going to leave it as toolpath now that's wrong you'll see why in a second I'm now going to click and again I'm going to click in the order of the uh, operations I want to cut so I'm going to cut out this in a bit first I'm going to click not on the inside but the outside because I want to create this this line here and notice that by having the toolpath it's rounded off the edges now that's no good because my 3d printer has got sharp edges so I'm going to have to undo that come back to my contour tool I'm going to have to go to a graphical toolpath uh, graphical path should I say uh, and that's going to maintain the point there I'm not going to worry about explaining why toolpath is different it's for milling um, that's a different uh, a different story so now that's correct I'm also going to click on the inside edge here that's correct as well and I can now take this profile and what am I going to do with this uh, let's just come to media here and I'm probably with gridlock turned on I'm just going to take that to the side so now if I come to the last view this is the inner profile I'm going to cut out now as I said um, when I showed you this I made a mistake that that's what I've cut out there I've made a mistake because I've not done the cutout down here so I'm now just going to go back to Fusion 360 and I've got to zoom in on this and I've got to make sure that I add these details in so let's also just zoom in down here and let's see how I'm going to do this well again what I'm probably going to do here is do this uh, first of all ah I know what I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to go to step settings or grid settings change my step spacing to one millimeter in fact I'm going to have to go to 0 0.5 because I'm working with some 0 0.5 millimeter settings there okay and if I'm not mistaken in here if I come back to my measuring tool and I measure the distance between there and there is that going to let me is it because I'm editing the sketch let's finish the sketch there because that worked last time I did that what am I doing wrong there from there to there there we are that's 16.5 so let's have a see. I'm just going to put some temporary dimension light in here and all of this is going to be in black and I'm just going to put in here 16.5. So again I'm looking at my relative grid reference points down here. 16.5, there it is and I've still got these as grey dimension lines because in the previous uh, one of my previous videos I changed the colour of the dimension lines so I'm just putting these in temporarily so let's go that, that's going to be there that I'm going to have a rectangle now at this particular point I am going to have to go back to my edit the sketch okay so this is going to be from that point it's going to be 2.5 and another half millimeter up so that's going to be three millimeters up I'm going to go 14.5 along so I'm looking again down here 14.5 by and that was 2.5 that's one and then I've got a block here which is going to be 8.5 by 2.5 and then I think I'm simply going to select this and I'm just going to visually place it on there and I shouldn't have this set as three millimeters and that's what it is okay so let's also double check a, whoop, a few other dimensions here as well that distance there should be three okay that's absolutely marvelous so that's it we're good to go let's just go to that dimension line there I'm going to come to the 
Okay, I'm going to move that across for my extended desktop. I'm going to come to delete part and I'm just going to trim that back once, twice because there were two lines there. And then all of this, let's do this in, oh, for goodness sake, contour, zero spacing, color blue, and I'm going to cut that out. Now, this will be the last thing to be cut. I want it to be the first thing to be cut. So what I'm going to have to do here, oh, and also notice now as well, of course, that because I've done the contour, that now selects the contour as one shape. If I just go to grid lock, if I just move that off, notice that this is made from different shapes. But this contour is all one, and grid lock lets me snap it back in again. Wonderful. I want this cut out to be the first thing that's going to be cut. So I'm going to come to my arrange options here and because it's at the front I can't move it any further forward so that's why they're grayed out. I'm going to send this to the back. Now as a result it's gone behind the black lines. It's still there. If I move the black lines out of the way you can see the blue line hidden underneath. So what I'm going to do here is now select those black lines, shift select them I'm going to send those to the back and now my blue shape comes back in front. But this is now in terms of a stacking order, I've got the black lines behind, then I've got this blue contour and then I've got the rest of the drawing basically. But it's going to make sure that I cut this out first, then I cut out, hang on a second, oh look what I've neglected to do, I've neglected to take that across, tut tut tut, oh dear me, let's have a see. That's going to go into, does it go there? I think that's right. Uh, what I'd like to do now is take it back in again and check it, but I'm, I'm not just for speed. But anyway, it's going to cut it now in the right order. First this, then this, then then this final cutout here. And that's going to leave me space for my micro USB plug to stick through. So that is looking really, really cool. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to stop there. We've been going for 17 minutes. Crazy. Stop there. Okay. See you in the next one.